We've got plans. We've got quotations. We had to push it down the slipway, throw ourselves aboard. And we were operating in about four and a half metre seas that night. I will get involved and identify the targets. These are the new engines that are going to be fitted into the new Sumner lifeboat. How lucky can your blokes be? In 1898, the Littleton Harbour Board donated a purpose-built, self-writing, four-oared lifeboat. And Joseph Day, who was the signalman at the time, was appointed the first skipper, or coxswain. And his volunteer crew uh, all came from Sumner. And the first lifeboat sta was stationed inside Cave Rock, the rowing lifeboat rescue, latterly was put on the uh, purpose-built building on the pier that was built out from Cave Rock, uh, from the roadside there. And uh, this worked for many years off the pier at the uh, at this Clifton end of the Sumner Beach. It used to operate before then with volunteers from about 1870, 1876, with the same people. So it has a history going back a long way. In the old days, the siren used to go and it was activated here by pushing a button. And uh, nowadays though, it's activated by remote control and the crew carry pages. We recruit crew from the local area for obvious reasons to enable them to get the lifeboat quickly. Um, the pages are activated either by the police in response to a 111 call or by the Rescue Coordination Centre in Wellington, who will have intercepted a distress call from a, a vessel somewhere in the area, and they've tasked some the lifeboat. They push the button, the pages go off, everybody rushes to the lifeboat. We're here at Avalon in Wellington, where the Rescue Coordination Centre coordinates responses to SAR incidents in the maritime, aviation and land environments throughout our search and rescue region. An example of where we might use the Sumner lifeboat is a yacht offshore from Banks Peninsula that gets into trouble and activates its distress beacon. When the police receive an emergency 111 call at the Southern Communication Centre, the call taker enters a water rescue uh, event into our computer system. We have a report of a uh, swimmer who's uh, in trouble of um Tata's mistake, he's been swept out to Bold Bay area. The dispatcher then pages the Sumner lifeboat and alerts the police unit in the area to go to the Sumner lifeboat headquarters to assist. As far as patrons concerned, I think they identified someone who lives in the area, that's me. I've got fundraising skills and I certainly know a lot of people in the city and 
it was a good choice. I didn't say no easily because I wanted to know what they had done in their huge history of over a hundred years. And, um, but I think the time's ripe now to put the Sumner Lifeboat Institution on the map and needing a new boat of $700,000, we'll do that. With the fundraising plan, any fundraising plan, there has to be a plan. And we've already had one management and volunteer meeting which um, had some quite interesting um, business folk that came with their ideas. I think I wanted to um, get involved in a community project uh, in Sumner to um, recognise one my interest in the sea. I've always uh, been interested in, um, in boats and boating and always been intrigued with uh, uh, the work that the, the lifeboat had, uh, had done. So to follow on from that, we will obviously have another meeting and identify the major plan of how to raise that huge amount of money. I think I joined the committee because uh, Lady Adrian Stewart approached a number of people, and me included, and uh, I think in the knowledge that um, I've lived in the Sumner area most of uh, my married life anyway, 30 odd years, and. Uh, when you live in Sumner, you're always uh, conscious of the lifeboat because you hear the siren and you're always interested in uh, what happens and what they're doing and uh, it's, a, it's a point of interest for the local community. So I was keen to, uh, to help out with their uh, fundraising requirements. There would have to be a fundraising coordinator appointed, which I don't see as my role entirely, as I mentioned previously, a patron is not supposed to do anything, but in my case I will get involved and identify the targets, so to speak. There has been applications made uh, to various funding organisations and I'm very confident that they will come on board. We do need the first lift, I must admit. One of the elements that probably isn't well recognised in a project like this is the the level of expertise required to get it in the right direction. As a designer I've been operating in the New Zealand market for 30 odd years. I, I studied overseas um, and uh, I've designed a vast number of patrol boats for various areas around the world as well as fishing vessels in New Zealand and uh, this boat is an evolution of 20 odd years of development uh, and there have been subtle changes that take place to get to where we are now. I'd have to go back to the management committee of 1998 who made a decision to acquire the, the Thames class lifeboat from the RNLI. That was the platform that this project's going to leap off. That was a big decision made by people who were thoroughly competent, thoroughly committed. Now, some of those people are still uh, actively involved with the lifeboat, but Paul Lawson as coxswain and Murray Johnson as secretary have had to pull forward that same thinking, that same level of expertise and competence. Now, I have no maritime skills or search and rescue skills. I just have bucket loads of enthusiasm for this this organisation and uh, Paul has brought the expertise. This is a um, 53 foot Thames class lifeboat that we acquired from the Royal National Lifeboat Institution in the United Kingdom. A number of years ago Summer Lifeboat did a strategic plan based upon search and rescue needs within this area. We looked at all the assets that Summer Lifeboat had and found that they were not a well balanced set of assets for modern search and rescue. The inshore fleet has been totally modernised, but we have the need for a high-speed, fast response boat that will work in with the inshore fleet to achieve a robust search and rescue capability. This particular boat, whilst a very capable search and rescue platform, is now starting to show her age. The boat itself is 34 years of age. If we were to keep this boat going forward 
One, it wouldn't fit in with the strategic plan of somewhere like that. And two, the costs of maintaining this boat as a frontline search and rescue boat will become prohibitive. The new boat, which will be based at Sumner on the slipway, means that we will be responding directly into the open sea, which can save up to 40 minutes deployment time against this boat. The estimated build time is six to nine months from the, from the day that the go button is pushed. But of course we can't do that until we've got funding secured. It's difficult to say how long that might take, but we would hope that we would have a very clear indication, say by the end of June, and therefore probably funding uh, is sufficient to push the go button July, August. Therefore we would hope the build, the boat might be on the slipway in about a year. We've got plans, we've got quotations, we've got lots of ideas and enthusiasm, but shortly we have to turn that into money and then that will become the lifeboat. So it's, it's going to be challenging, I'm sure, stimulating, without any question, and uh, in the end it must be very rewarding. We'll be able to walk away from the project and the knowledge that uh, some of the lifeboat will have a, a, a fabulous purpose-built vessel to save lives at sea, we think, for 30 years. The lifeboat station behind me here was uh, first located in Days Harbour back in the 1960s and the slipway then, which was wooden, was basically rotten inside five years. So the council engineers designed and built the present slipway, which is a concrete structure based like a bridge. And uh, the buildings were enhanced in the 70s the purpose of which was to improve the training facilities, which you can see on the top story here now. This is the training room, a key component of the building refurbishment. Uh, with the chart tables up, we can accommodate up to 14 attendees at a training course. If we go through to the crew ready area, this is, this is where the crew would get a quick briefing if necessary before launching. And then of course the, um, the comms room where the, uh, the shore base team operate the radios, the uh, GPS tracking charts, etc. Sumner Lifeboat Institution, as it's properly known, now known as Sumner Lifeboat, uh, is made up purely of volunteers. The supporters and the management are all volunteers and of course the crew are volunteers. There's no paid staff. Donations and bequests come from uh, an amazing variety of quarters, predominantly from local people, uh, often enough from people who have been uh, involved with the rescue. We have recently been the beneficiaries of a, an estate where the deceased wasn't known to us. And I've since learned that uh, this woman lived in Linwood and it was either a, nef a nephew or a niece had been rescued by the lifeboat some years ago, many, many years ago. And evidently her husband had a, a codicil in his will that she carried through to hers. We were very fortunate to, a few years ago to be the beneficiaries of a substantial donation from uh, Ian Urquhart, who's a, a local retired gentleman. And Ian walks around this way frequently uh, as part of his daily routine and he just noticed that the lifeboat station was looking like it needed a bit of tender loving care and there was a bit of publicity going on at the same time and uh, he contacted me one morning and suggested that we might benefit from some money and cut a long story short it was substantial enough to be able to leapfrog into this building project that was completed last year. We're in the dry shed now where the crew equipment's all stored and the jet ski which was acquired in 2005 from a grant from uh, the Southern Trust in Dunedin. And um, more recently, the quad bike was acquired through a grant from the Cavisham Foundation, another trust based in Dunedin. Safety is foremost here with the launching and retrieving of the jet skis, quite heavy. It's all up about 400 kilos or something. And of course, all the safety equipment um, 
personal flotation devices, wetsuits, survival suits, life jackets, boots, uh, all averaging around two and a half to three thousand dollars per crew. And uh, we endeavoured to kit out for 25 crew. So there's quite a bit of money tied up just in the safety gear. And of course the um, handheld radios which are uh, for the crew to take to sea on the vessels that don't have radios. We're in the main boat shed now and the, at the top of the slipway and of course there's no big lifeboat in it. Our main asset, LPC Rescue, lies afloat over at Littleton. She's too heavy for this building and the slipway. These are designed for a, a vessel about 15 tonnes. Um, part of the, the whole project was to get this building ready for this vessel that's going to be put into this boat shed. Okay, originally the rather class lifeboat that was in this shed sat on a set of rollers running down the centre here and was launched by knocking out a slip and just running down the slipway. The new boat sits on a trolley and the width of the trolley means that we've got to place a new beam on this side and a new beam on the other side running the full length of this shed to mate up with the beams on the concrete slipway. To those we will attach railway iron and the trolley sits on that with a large winch at the head of the shed in this position up here which will winch the trolley up and down allowing us to launch the lifeboat. Presently it's empty so we've got the dinghy and the IRB housed in here because they can be. Arantia here in Auckland build these. They were designed and built primarily for surf life-saving clubs. But of course, because we do a lot of work around the surf line anyway, uh, we assist and are assisted by both Taylor's Mistake Surf Life Saving and Sumner Surf Life Saving. So there's quite a bit of synergy between those two units and this organisation for searching and rescuing. Ordinarily, a two-man boat, as opposed to the jet ski, which can be a one-man boat. Both rapid launch, but both only good for close inshore work. So um, this boat might also be used as a tender on the big lifeboat. If it goes to sea for a, a major rescue, it would carry a tender for transferring people to and from the various boats that might be involved in the rescue. Prior to Sumner Lifeboat acquiring this vessel, she was based in Scotland and owned by the Aaron Ally. Uh, this is our main wheelhouse, uh, which houses um, most of our uh, electronic packages. We've got the VHF radios, GPS, HF directional finding gear, HF radios, VHF directional finding gear, and all the instrumentation for the engine room. This vessel's got um, two survivors cabins, one forward and one aft. This is the after survivor cabin sitting behind me. Put up to 30, 30 to 40 people in here if necessary. This is the engine room. We've got two Detroit V8s with twin turbos on them. A Lister fire pump and generator. And the Lister can double as a salvage pump as well. This is what we refer to as the engineer's cabin. Um, the Main switchboards are here uh, with all the fuses, signal flags, uh, publications, entrance on my left here to the engine room, uh, entrance on my right hand side here to the forward survivors cabin. We can put um, people in here laying down if necessary, um, escape the hatch up here, uh, we keep life jackets for all the survivors in here not necessarily a very comfortable position in a big sea. I conducted a rescue off of the Canterbury coast where I had to take this boat 100 miles and we were operating in about four and a half metre seas that night um, and at no time did I feel frightened on this boat at all. We took her down to Timaru which was a trip of 120 miles in um, not very pleasant conditions and wasn't a problem, not a hiccup out the boat at all. She's been a very robust platform and uh, I can't really falter other than her age. 
And this uh, boat was stationed in Arlesey in Scotland and operated into the North Atlantic. In talking with the um, original coxswain of this boat who now lives in Timaru, she looked after her crew eminently whilst over there. And in one rescue, she capsized, but still came upright and brought all those crew home, as well as the survivors that they'd picked up that night. So very, very robust boat. Sorry to see her go out of service, but she's done 35 years now, and time to give the girl a rest. Yeah, we're getting underway. A lot of the technology um, and instrumentation that's on this vessel is actually going to be incorporated into the new lifeboat. Fire control panels, indicator switches, digital readouts, um, the electronic package where you've got radar and uh, chart plotters combined, uh, foot pedals, boom mics, um, all to make it a lot more easier and er ergonomic for operating the lifeboat. The demands of my job have increased significantly recently and I believe I've probably brought as much as I can to the role of secretary. It really needs to be taken to another level now. Um, I've given it five years and um, we're very fortunate to have Fiona with skills that can um, take it forward now that we've built the platform. Being in charge is, is enormous responsibility and um, in some ways a little scary but I think I can handle the situation. Picking up $300,000 from the Canterbury Community Trust is the culmination of uh, a lot of energy, a lot of commitment, some pretty high levels of competence from a lot of people and uh, yeah, it's pretty buzzy to tell you the truth. Murray, I'm on in, how are you? I'm very well. Good. Come on in, take a seat. Thank you. The lifeboat application was an easy decision for the trustees to make. When applicant groups put their lives at risk, we've got to ensure they have the best of equipment and from that point of view, the trustees saw this as a worthy application. Well done. Excellent. And uh, we look forward to uh, hearing of progress as uh, things you know, yeah, go well, down the chain. That I leave it in pretty good hands with Fiona and um, leave with a great deal of pride. I'm going to stay connected with the management team just to assist them through the, uh, the details of the new boat. Uh, but they're well placed to take it forward themselves now and I just look forward to having a ride in the new boat when it's launched. Murray has given a huge amount of time and effort towards the lifeboat in the time that he's been here. He's done a, a huge amount of effort with the buildings, the new lifeboat, jet boat and the new vessel um, being built now and uh, amazingly huge shoes to fill and I'm hoping to actually be able to get there at some point. One of the problems that we have in some lifeboat is that uh, we tend to burn out people in a fairly rapid manner. The trick is with volunteers uh, trying to manage their workloads so that that doesn't happen and we don't lose them. When we've got people with the capabilities that Fiona's got in both administration and her ability in a seagoing role, we have to take care of those people um, because we just cannot afford to lose them. I think I, I'm capable of doing the, the job and doing it well and, and hopefully by the time I do decide to step down from the position I've um, put a little bit extra into the, some of the lifeboat that was here when I started. Well I'm elated that we've managed to um, acquire the funding from the Trust. The, it's not all in the bag yet, we still need further funding, but I'm confident that we will achieve that over the next six months if necessary. It's going to be a challenging time in this next year, uh, making sure that the build goes right,
but I'm also confident that the key suppliers that we've got in this project have got the expertise to make sure that we get a first class product. About mid, early to midway through last year, Paul started to um, just gather together potential ideas for the design. And it steered us towards a company in Christchurch here called uh, Altec, who just recently acquired the skills and the tools to build locally uh, aluminium boats of this size. Previously that's not been an option in Christchurch. Altec Boats now is just four years old, all but. It was the brainchild of Rob Gendel, Littleton Engineering. And to cut a long story short, Rob employed me as the manager some years ago, and it's grown from there. They brought together their designer, Tim Barnett. The Sumner Lifeboat commissioned Tim to do a um, concept, then took that to a design. The current philosophy is get a search and rescue boat there as quickly as possible, but combine that with aerial support so that uh, you can maximise the op options and, and get the best results. And then from that a bid pack was prepared and then key suppliers were invited to quote on the components, the jet units, the engines, the build of the boat, infrastructure and what have you. We've got a small team of uh, aluminium craftspeople at Altec Boats and so they will be manufacturing the boat. It'll take probably two or three guys, um, the best part of a year probably, to manufacture it. Um, there will no doubt be some changes and modifications as we go. It'll take a wee while, but it'll be done properly and uh, we've got to satisfy Tim's requirements as the designer and Sumner Lifeboat's uh, requirements as the end user of the boat. These are the new engines that are going to be fitted into the new Sumner Lifeboat. They are a Megatech MBE 926 engine. They're a 7.2 litre turbocharged diesel engine producing 500 horsepower. They're a full marinised engine complete with heat exchanger and water cooled manifolds. They are then coupled up to a ZF gearbox and then through to the Hamilton jet unit. They're a nice lightweight compact design. Um, only weighing 680 kilograms. They have been specially designed for the marine environment with this bolt-on modular filter setup, making servicing quick, clean and easy. This is one of the HJ322 water jets that have been selected by the Sumner lifeboats for their new patrol vessel. The beauty of water jets for these sorts of people is that they are highly manoeuvrable at all speeds. So they can be manoeuvred full ahead, full astern, or at what we call zero speed when the reverse duct is at a mid position. So they still have 360 degree manoeuvrability through the swivel nozzle. The jet operates by water being drawn in through the intake, taken up, pressurized by the impeller, and discharged through the steering nozzle at the end of the jet. The beauty of this particular system is it's going to have the Blue Arrow control system on, but that just fits on the top of the jet unit here and electronically operates both of those cylinders for reverse and uh, steering. The Blue Arrow control system provides all the electronics and controls on the bridge so that the skipper can uh, navigate the vessel uh, in the direction he wants. He can uh, make the vessel move forward, back, or even directly sideways. With two jets on a vessel, uh, it allows the boat to go directly sideways. So it gives him a lot of control, uh, particularly when he's docking or maneuvering around an object, or maybe even picking somebody up out of the water if necessary. Uh, jets have some good capabilities, and the electronics uh, allows them to, to take good advantage of all those. You can drive with the helm, and then there's a the throttle in the reverse here. Or the second option is the uh, this is called a mouse boat manoeuvring controller. So the gist behind this is um, when you're manoeuvring at low speeds, if you're not a jet expert, you don't know where to put the bucket. So with the mouse, basically anything you do with the mouse, the boat's gonna do. So if you push it sideways, the boat will move sideways. If you twist it, the boat will twist, and you got forward and back. And um, it basically came about because a lot of boats have a high turnover of staff, 
and they can't keep up with the play on how to do it with the controls. So we're just trying to make it really easy for them. And there's a lot of software behind how that operates the jet to do, to move the boat sideways and do everything it's supposed to do. Without the support of the um, local manufacturers and the goodwill that they are showing in this project, this vessel, instead of being three quarters of a million dollars, will be more like 1.2, 1.3 million dollars. These are some of the plans here. This one here shows you how the boat fits on the jig and the, the heights from the top of the jig to the bottom of the boat. This one here you can see the, the stringers and the ribs in the boat. Hopefully if everything goes well and all the contractors get dubbed in, it's possible to be November 09 launching date. We're five weeks into the build. At this stage we've welded all the rider bars to each frame and then put the frames onto the keel bar and at the moment we're bolting it all to the jib. Well as you can see the frames are all up and the keel's in place. It's um, really very exciting uh, for Sunder Lifeboat that um, the project is now underway and we can get a real sense of the size of the boat. Well there she is Walter, first of the whole weights on. Four peak. Uh, originally we were going to have a hatch going in through the deck, but we're not going to have that now. It's going to be a hatch coming in from the survivors cabin. Right -o. We'll keep um, the odd ropes and stuff like that there, but essentially it'll be a void space. The next section here is the survivors cabin. There's much room as that, eh? Yeah. And the crawl space will be through that forward collision bulkhead. Yes. Um, allowing us access to the forward end where the uh, winch motor will be. Right. Then the after end of the survivor's cabin, galley on one side, toilet on the other. Galley and toilet. <laughs> How lucky can your blokes be? Then this section here that you can see is an equipment store. We'll keep things like the um, salvage pump, the suction gear, fire hoses, bits and pieces like that. Stuff that we need to get at, but not all the time. Not in the way either. Then this next section here is uh, fuel tank space. Right. Um, thousand litres per side. Individually feeding each engine. So each engine will have its own fuel tank. Mm -hmm. We will have the ability to cross flow fuel if we need to. Below this level, because the boat's upside down at the moment, is where the wheelhouse is going to be. Then moving aft, engine room. Two big Mercedes diesel engines going in here. And behind this bulkhead here is the jet units. How about monitoring the engines? How, how's that going to happen? It'll all be bridge controlled or wheelhouse controlled, mm -hmm. along with all the systems. So your bilge pumps, your fuel transfers, uh, your firefighting, everything will be activated from the wheelhouse. There will be a camera in the engine room and the engine room will be lit all the time. So when you're watching by video? Yeah. In the wheelhouse? Yes. Goodness gracious me. Two level deck, so the, you've got your main after deck. Step down to this level here, mm -hmm. which will run through, big boarding platform on the back, will give us a rescue deck that's about two metres long by 3.9 metres wide. We'll be able to actually put the IRB on the back there. And on the outside, of course, we'll have our fender system, yeah. much as we've already got on the jet boat, the yes. Hamilton jet. So, as you can see, they've got the whole plates on at the moment, um, ready to put the sides on now. Yes. Um, so we expect to see her turned over in the next month. It's a mighty looking machine. I love it. The internal jig will be dismantled from inside it, and it will be lifted over with two large cranes. I wish I was 40 years younger.
90% of the um, hull construction is finished. Um, we're in the stage where they're putting handrails on, um, safety rails. From that position, they will then move on to doing some work inside the wheelhouse of the boat. And we confidently expect that the boat will go away for be, to be painted in about three weeks' time. I'm just um, modifying these bilge pump panels so that we've got a little additional light in the form of an LED there that uh, will tell you when the pump is actually activated. The paint process is going to take up to about two weeks and then the boat will come back and there will be the actual fit out, so all the componentry, windows, doors will be arriving, um, electronic packages, um, all the wiring, uh, firefighting equipment will all be arriving and then will be the process of fit out will begin. Today we're going to lift the boat with a crane and make it up to the trolley that Stark Brothers have built for us um, so that we can make sure that it will properly fit the trolley before we take the trolley to Sumner. At the same token, we'll get a weight for the boat because there are some limitations on how much the boat will have to weigh for us to be able to make sure the boat performs correctly. The uh, lift of the boat went quite well actually, it's the first time the boat's been married up to the cradle so uh, it looks pretty, uh, pretty close for tolerances. Um, the lift of the boat went uh, very well as far as balance and everything goes and um, yeah it looks, looks good, it looks good. I think, um, I think there will be hardly any alterations to be done. There was a bit of a, uh, uh, a weight suggested of about 7.5 to 8 tonne and it came in just on 8 tonne which is um, pretty good I think. So I think it's build weight had to be eight tonne or less. So I think it's spot on. Eight tonne. Just, in, just inside, just inside. We've negotiated a very good arrangement with CWF Hamilton where the new lifeboat's going to be named Blue Arrow Rescue. And that uh, is an agreement that'll fund the lifeboat for five years and beyond. We look forward to continuing that long relationship that we've had with Hamilton's since back in the 70s with the first jet boat. It was felt by the prospective boat builder and the naval architect that some recognition should be given to Sumner Lifeboat because of the thought and concept of this new boat. And they've agreed to call the class of boat the Sumner class. Once the boat's in the water, we'll do a thorough check of the vessel to make sure there's no leaks through any of the valves or um, strum, strum boxes. Um, switch on the, um, the electric bilge pumps um, and fire up some of the systems in the boat to safeguard.
in today's sea trials, we will be checking the inputs on the electrical systems for the Blue Arrow controls. Uh, we don't anticipate any problems because there have been a quite a bit of work done um, on that field and Hamiltons have been extremely good um, in coming down with their little computer and setting things up for us. We're just going to go through commissioning the jets, um, making sure all the control systems configured and working correctly um, and obviously make sure the jets are mechanically working soundly as well. So yeah, it's a pretty good day for us. This is the uh, air intake and the turbo here and the gearbox just here and then the shaft runs under that plate there and down the back is the jet. On the top of the jet there, that fancy looking box is the electronics. Apart from these two searchlights that are, are there, they are the only lights on there that are not LED technology. So all the other lighting, all the interior lighting um, and the navigation lighting and everything like that is all LED, which has a number of benefits. It's very long lasting. Um, very low power usage, and that also meant that we could run much lighter cabling to the um, to the mast. This area here is called the chine. There are some very subtle shapes in this because the placement of this chine dictates the angle of this plate. So if you actually get that wrong and that wrong, you'll end up with a very badly performing boat. Each crewman has to wear safety harness life jacket. And this safety harness can click onto a track system that we have going around the boat. The night vision camera that we have at the top of the mast, which is interfaced through our nav screens, has actually got an added benefit that it, not only can we use it for finding people in the water, but it also makes travelling at high speed at night very easy. We can actually see the waves that we're going towards, or if we've got the camera turned round, um, facing astern, we can see the waves that are coming up behind us um, and it gives the crew a lot of confidence to operate the boat at high speed at night. That's the fluor controller there that controls the angle of the camera and the various settings for um, the operation. Not expecting any real surprises today and so this is basically the final sign-offs that we're happy with the way the controls and everything are set up. Steady at 36 knots, three-quarter power. We're going to open her up. Steady on 39.5. But I didn't expect much more. We've got the tide against us. Well, the ability to stop on a dime um, amazed everybody when we do a crash stop. The ability to operate um, inside quite big surf and turn the boat in its own length using all the different controls that we've got um, makes it very, very good. OK, I'm going to wind her up now. OK, stand by, boat going round. We've done a good speed run, that's worked out well. We've hit RPM at full speed, which is the critical thing for us and also for the engine boys. Um, good to see the boat handling so well and staying so stable at a high speed turn, which again is, is pretty critical. Uh, the, the other factors we're looking for on trials are the ability for the Blue Arrow system to work well with the mouse boat when we've got docking control going on, manoeuvring around the docks and as we saw, it handled really well. There we are alongside.
ladies and gentlemen, lovely to have you all here. This is a very important time, this is a very lovely place, and uh, we're doing something extremely important today, and probably more importantly, something that's extremely positive and uh, of great benefit to the community. I'd like to extend a special welcome to our local MPs, the National MP from Port Hills, Honourable David Carter, Labour MP for the Port Hills, Ruth Dyson, also our Mayor Bob Parker and Joanna Parker Knowles. Our patron, Adrian, Lady Stewart, other distinguished guests, life members, supporters and crew. Well, first of all, I'd just really like to say how proud I am to be patron of the Sumner Lifeboat Institution. Oh, yes. Well done. Oh, the boat behind me represents far more than we ever envisaged. Um, it's exceeded our expectations, no question about that. As I understand it, the performance uh, uh, that Paul's discovered is uh, equal to or better than anything that we'd anticipated. And I've had the, the joy of going out on it on a couple of occasions, uh, and to me it was a, a bit of a buzz. I'm so grateful that we have an extraordinary band of volunteers because there is no way that you can put a dollar value on what's been done here. There's, there's the cost of the hardware. And that would be a small part, I would suspect, of the true cost of running and maintaining uh, an organisation like this. So I take my hat off to the local community. And in fact, you know, typical Christchurch, there are people involved here from all over the city. And uh, so when, when we have a local community in Christchurch, its threads run right through the place. It's just an, an awe-inspiring achievement.